everyone, my name is Ms. Hu and I am a physics teacher. In this video, I am going to show you how to make your own Cartesian divers. in order to understand the Archimedes principle better. Here is the apparatus and materials you need to make a Cartesian diver. You will need to get a large plastic water bottle. Get one you can squeeze easily. So getting one of these large disposable plastic water bottles is the best. Because if you get a rigid one, you can't squeeze it and you can't observe the Cartesian diver in motion. Getting a larger one enables you to watch the movement more easily compared to getting a small one. Although a small one works, you can't see the movement as clearly as you could with a large one. So get a large disposable plastic water bottle just like this. Now, for the Cartesian diver, there are many ways that you can create the Cartesian diver. I'm going to show you two ways in this video. For both ways, you're going to need some plasticine. You don't need very much. The reason we need the plasticine is because we can remove and add on as much as we need in order to change the weight of the diver so that it can float upright in the water. In addition to the plasticine, you can either use a dropper, a glass one is fine, or you can use a bendy straw. If you're choosing to use straws, make sure you get a plastic straw, not a paper straw. Because a paper straw is going to soak up the water, it's going to get really heavy and then it's going to sink instead of floating on the surface of the water. Now I know that plastic straws are quite hard to get because a lot of places are no longer using them. In fact, we're heading towards a complete ban of plastic straws. However, you may still be able to find them on box drinks just like this. Make sure the straw that you are using has a bend just like this one. It's going to be a lot easier for you compared to using a straight straw. So, get one of these box drinks and use one of the plastic straws that comes with these boxes. Please make sure you buy the box drink and not steal one of the straws off a box in the stores. Now, if you're wondering where to get this kind of glass dropper, normally you can get them from bottles of serum, just like this. Now, if you don't know where to get these bottles of serums, you can ask your mom, your aunt, an older sister, even your neighbours. However, before you start using the dropper, please make sure that they have already finished the serum and they don't need the dropper anymore because once you've made the Cartesian diver out of the glass dropper, you cannot reuse the dropper to put the serum onto the face. That's just not hygienic. So if you know people who are using bottles of serum with this kind of droppers, you can actually start to collect these droppers for your own scientific experiments at home. In this case, we're going to use one of these droppers to create our Cartesian Diver. In this video, I'm going to show you how to create a Cartesian Diver using both methods. Now, if you're using the straw, you don't need the entire length of the straw. You just need to cut it to a small piece just like this. Make sure you keep the bend in the straw. Now, with the plasticine, what we're going to do is we're going to fix the plasticine over one of the open ends. Make sure you keep the other end open. How much plasticine to use? You'll actually need to do a bit of trial and error because there's actually no fixed number that I can give you. If you use too little plasticine, the straw may not float upright, it may actually float flat. And if you use too much plasticine, the straw might end up sinking all the way to the bottom of the water. So once we have fixed the plasticine onto the straw, you need to put it into water to see whether it will float upright like this. So it looks kind of like a seahorse. So before we fill up the water bottle and put, throw the Cartesian diver in, what we're going to do is first we're going to test whether this straw is able to float on the water upright. And look, as you can see, it floats upright. If you find that there's too much plasticine or there's not enough plasticine, you can add or remove plasticine until it floats just like this. Now if you're going to use a glass dropper, you need the glass dropper to float upright like this. If you try putting a glass dropper into water straight away like this, you're going to find that it doesn't float upright. In fact, it floats on the surface of the water like so. This is not going to work. You need the dropper to float upright like this. So how do we do that? That's what the plasticine is for. You need to get a little bit of the plasticine and wrap it around the bottom of the dropper where the open end is. The purpose of the plasticine in this case is to weigh the dropper down in such a way so that it will float in the water. Now, let's try. 
as you can see, the dropper is now floating upright, vertically, just like how we want it. So you can see in both cases, whether I'm using the glass dropper or the bendy straw, both are floating upright with the help of the plasticine. Once you are able to get the objects to float this way, there's a high chance that your Cartesian diver is going to be successful. Now, in order to observe the Cartesian diver, what you need to do is you fill up your large water bottle with water. Try to fill it up with as much water as possible and leave very little airspace. The reason is because we're going to be squeezing this water bottle and if there's too much air inside, you're going to spend most of your effort trying to compress that air instead of forcing the water into the Cartesian diver so that it can sink. So, let's test our Cartesian diver. We're going to start with the glass dropper first. And as you can see, it's floating vertically, which is what we want. Okay. Screw on the cap. Okay. And what we're going to do now is we're going to squeeze the bottle. And you can see how the dropper has sunk to the bottom. And when I let go, it floats back to the top. So what's happening here is this. Now take a closer look. As we squeeze, what happens is there's actually water that has gone into the dropper. And I let go, the water has come back out. Again. Looks like magic, right? Now what happened here is this. As we squeeze the bottle, there is no more space for the water to go, right? So the water is then forced into the open end of the dropper. That increases the overall weight of the Cartesian diver, which means the weight of the dropper plus the plasticine plus the water that is now inside the dropper. Because the overall weight has increased, the buoyant force of the water is no longer able to support the Cartesian diver and that causes the diver to sink. As we release, the compressed air inside the dropper forces the water out of the dropper and that decreases the weight of the Cartesian diver, making it float once again. Now, let us observe how it looks like with our straw diver instead. I will eventually get this out. It's not coming out. Eventually, I got it out. Now, let's test it with our straw diver. So you can see here, the straw diver is floating vertically. Closing the cap, and let's observe what happens. So now, as I squeeze the bottle, you can see that the straw diver has sunk to the bottom. And as I release, the straw diver floats again to the top. What happened here is exactly the same as what happened with our glass dropper diver. As we squeeze the water bottle, the water has gone into the open end of the straw, making the weight of the diver heavier. That means the weight of the straw plus a plus a seam plus the water that's now inside it. Because the weight has increased, the buoyant force is no longer able to push the straw up, making the diver sink. And as we release the compressed air, pushes the water out, making the weight lower than a buoyant force again, and a buoyant force is able to push the straw diver up to the surface of the water. Now, if you do this activity and you find that your diver is not able to sink, like no matter how you squeeze it, it still stays floating on the surface, try filling the bottle with more water. That means try to minimize whatever air that's inside the bottle. Even if you end up filling the entire bottle with water and there's no air at all inside, that's still fine. In fact, it's more likely it will work that way compared to leaving some air inside the bottle. If you happen to make both, then just pop them both inside and watch the both of them travel together. So I hope you have found this activity 
educational in helping you understand how the Cartesian divers are able to demonstrate the Archimedes principle in application. Don't forget to click like and remember to subscribe to my YouTube channel, Physics Rocks. Thanks for watching and have fun.